This is Paul Eckberg from the Division of Infectious Diseases at Stanford University. In this video, I'm going to provide a brief introduction into the world of antibiotics. We're going to focus on the physician's approach to infections and a general overview of antibiotic use and terminology. The learning objectives of this talk include describing the host bug drug triad, understand the basic terminology of antimicrobial agents, define empiric therapy and definitive therapy, contrast broad spectrum and narrow spectrum therapy, and list the situations in which combination antibiotic therapy is used in clinical practice. Let's start with a case. A 28-year-old software engineer presents to your clinic with a two-day history of productive cough, shortness of breath, and fever. He smokes one pack of cigarettes per day and drinks two pints of beer every night. On physical exam, his temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, which is high. Pulse is 125, also high and respiratory rate is high at 20 breaths per minute, and his blood pressure is probably low for him at 90 over 75. Ronchi and egophony are auscultated in the right lung field, and the remainder of the exam is unremarkable. His peripheral white blood cell count is 20,000 with 20% bands, indicative of a potential infection. Chest x-ray reveals a right middle lobe consolidation, and sputum gram stain reveals gram-positive diplococci, as you can see in the lower right-hand figure. He is hospitalized and started on moxifloxacin, 400 milligrams IV daily. When physicians encounter an infection such as this, how do they make rapid treatment decisions with regard to initial, or empiric, antibiotic therapy? The clinical presentation is often complex, and unlike other types of diseases, the assessment of infectious diseases has the added complexity of microbiology, including known or suspected microbial pathogens and their susceptibilities or resistance to the potential antibiotics that you might choose. The host bug drug triad is an extremely helpful construct to help clinicians make antibiotic decisions. Choosing an initial or empiric antibiotic often involves more than simply choosing a drug for a disease entity, as is often done for other diseases. The empiric antibiotic choice requires knowledge of host risk factors for certain pathogens, for example, recent travel, specific hobbies or activities, or coexisting diseases, local or community-wide resistance patterns, and likelihood of pathogen resistance, among other microbiological and clinical characteristics. As one example, likely pathogenic etiologies for certain infections differ depending on various host factors, seen here in the yellow box, such as geographic setting, including country, hospital, inpatient versus outpatient setting, and other similar characteristics, anatomic location, and host immune status. Similarly, drug characteristics, seen here in the orange box, must be kept in mind, including spectrum of pathogen coverage, penetration or drug concentration at the anatomical site of infection, and possible detrimental drug-drug interactions. The treating clinician must juggle these clinical and microbiological characteristics, often rapidly, to make rational, empiric treatment choices. You can read through some of the key bug and drug factors that need to be considered. A common scenario for the infectious disease physician is a consultation to help manage a patient who is failing initial empiric antibiotic therapy. Again, the host bug drug triad is a helpful construct to systematically evaluate why a particular antibiotic choice failed, whether it be unrecognized risk factors for acquisition of certain pathogens, thus guiding additional diagnostic testing or additional therapy, suboptimal dosing in light of potentially low drug concentrations or inactivation of the drug at this specific anatomical site, leading to dose changes, or the presence of a resistant pathogen, also potentially leading to antibiotic changes or additions. Now let's cover some basic terminology. Strictly speaking, an antibiotic is a substance produced by a microorganism that inhibits the growth of another microbe. Microorganisms use these substances to maintain a competitive advantage in their local environment. There are many examples, two of which are listed here. Bacillus species might produce antibiotics that target other bacteria, while certain fungi might secrete substances that kill bacteria. Antimicrobials as a group include agents that target bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites, and are thus named antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitics. For the remainder of this video, and for the antibiotic video series, we will focus on the antibacterial agents. And as you can see, 
Antibiotics are often used interchangeably with antibacterials in the clinical setting. This slide is a visual representation of the primary sites of activity for the major classes or subclasses of antibacterial agents. Generally speaking, there are four categories of bacterial targets, cell wall, outer cell membrane, nucleic acids, and ribosomes, which are selected as targets for antibiotics because they are generally unique to the bacterial cell components rather than human cells. We will keep coming back to this slide as we discuss the different antibiotic classes in other videos. You heard the word empiric in the context of the case study in which moxifloxacin was chosen as the empiric regimen and the choice of antibiotics using the host bug drug triad. Empiric therapy is presumptive therapy based on the likely infection and pathogens involved. This is often broad spectrum, which we will cover in the next slide, and the goal is to decrease morbidity and mortality with rapid administration of a potentially effective antibiotic. And these types of antibiotics are useful in infections in which there's a low likelihood of pathogen recovery during the clinical course. Definitive therapy, in contrast, is targeted pathogen-based therapy based on the culture and susceptibility results or other diagnostic testing. Definitive therapy is often narrow spectrum, and the goal here is to minimize toxicity and develop a development of resistance using the narrowest spectrum possible. In general, note that for every infection that we encounter in the clinic, the goal should be to use the narrowest spectrum of therapy possible once pathogens are known or grow in culture. And note that in many cases, this can be several days after the start of empiric therapy. Finally, prophylaxis is used to prevent infection. We won't spend much time talking about prophylaxis, but I encourage you to read about this on your own. Now let's cover broad spectrum versus narrow spectrum therapy. Broad spectrum antibiotics have a wide range of activity versus multiple types or multiple groups of bacteria. For example, a particular broad spectrum antibiotic might cover both aerobes and anaerobes, or similarly, a broad spectrum antibiotic might have activity against both gram positive and gram negative pathogens. This type of therapy is usually reserved for polymicrobial infections, infections in severely ill patients, such as patients who reside in the intensive care unit for their treatment, or infections of unknown etiology. In contrast, narrow spectrum antibiotics have a focused activity on one specific group or one specific species or type of bacteria. For example, aerobic gram negatives might be covered by a class of drugs called the aminoglycosides, which we'll cover in a separate video, or a particular drug might be specific for gram positive cocci, for example, vancomycin, linazolid, and daptomycin. With any infection, again, as mentioned, the goal is to use the most narrow spectrum agent possible. As an example on approach to empiric therapy, let's go back to the case, taking the host bug drug triad into account. First, using the host part of the triad, this patient was determined to have a lower respiratory tract infection or a community-acquired pneumonia based on the medical history, the constellation of symptoms and signs, along with the chest x-ray and other diagnostic tests. Then using the bug part of the triad, the physician used knowledge of the common pathogens involved in this particular infection, including what are called typical and atypical pathogens, and their own community's patterns in resistance. Finally, an empiric regimen was chosen, taking aspects of the drug part of the triad into account. In this case, moxifloxacin, a member of the fluoroquinolone class, was chosen as empiric therapy. This is a broad spectrum agent and again covers the typical and atypical pathogens that are routinely seen in this type of infection. As a continuation from the last slide, here's an example using national guidelines to help make informed decisions on initial antibiotic choices. In this case, using the Infectious Diseases Society of America guidelines. Based on knowledge of the offending pathogens and the site of care, these guidelines focus on non-ICU hospital ward care versus patients who are hospitalized in the intensive care unit. Moxifloxacin, the empiric choice used in this case example, is a member of the fluoroquinolone class, which you can see is currently one of the top three empiric choices for this type of infection. You will learn more about the fluoroquinolones, the macrolides, and the beta-lactams in separate videos.
I briefly mentioned combination therapy on the last slide. Combination therapy with two or more antibiotics is a relatively common practice, especially for clinical situations used on this slide. Combination therapy provides broad spectrum empiric therapy for serious or severe infections. It treats polymicrobial infections, such as anaerobic plus aerobic pathogen infections, or infections caused by both gram negatives and gram positives. Combination therapy has the potential to decrease emergence of resistant strains and also potentially decreases toxicity by reduction of the dose of one of the antimicrobials used in the combination. Synergy is an interesting phenomenon. This is bacterial inhibition or killing by a combination regimen that might be greater than that of the individual agents in the combination. The mechanisms behind this phenomenon are fairly complex and in some cases poorly understood. For example, one antibiotic in the combination might block an enzymatic inactivation of the other antibiotic. For example, the combination of a beta-lactam plus a beta-lactamase inhibitor. Or as another example, one antibiotic enhances the cellular uptake of the other. For example, a beta-lactam in combination with an aminoglycoside for severe pseudomonas aeruginosa infection. Additional detail on synergy is beyond the scope of this overview, and again, we'll be covering the classes of antibiotics I just mentioned in other videos. Finally, there are many resources available to help clinicians make complex antibiotic treatment decisions, most of which now have online components. I list some of the more popular resources here, such as the Sanford Guide, among many other similar apps or guides that you can read here. In addition to IDSA guidelines as mentioned in the context of our empiric antibiotic choice in the pneumonia case. I provide a few web links that infectious disease doctors and other physicians use in everyday practice.